I pre-ordered Fort because it's published by Leader Games, which I'm a huge fan of. But also because it appears to be a deviation, a big deviation, from their usual games. First there was Vast, where everyone has extremely different ways to win and plays the game extremely differently. The knight wins by slaying the dragon, the goblins win the goblins win by slaying the knight. The dragon wins by escaping the cave. The thief wins by stealing treasures. And you can even play as the freaking cave, which wins by collapsing and killing everyone inside. Then there was Root, where everyone has similar ways to score points, but also plays the game extremely differently as well. Each faction has their own mechanics and tricks for scoring, fighting, and just moving around the board. But now we have Fort, designed by Grant Rodiak, developed by Nick Bruckman, and artwork, of course, by the amazing Kyle Farron, which breaks the asynchronous mold and starts everyone on equal footing with the same goal. Hi, my name is Dave from Tabletop Videos, and here's five reasons I think Fort should find a way onto your game shelf. Reason number one. As I mentioned before, leader games are known for having an extremely high level of variability that each player has their own set of rules to follow, and that's one of the things that I love about those games. However, if you're playing these games with new friends, a five-player game of Root can easily take 45 minutes just to teach. This game breaks that long teach time and the basics of the game could be taught in less than five minutes. In fact, here's a one minute summary of how the game is played. Welcome to Fort, the object of the game is to win and you win by having the most points at the end of the game. Fort is a deck builder where your cards represent your friends, which are played to collect toys and pizzas and build a, you guessed it, fort. When it's your turn, you're the leader and you'll do the five things listed on the player board. First, you'll discard any friends that are in your yard. Next, you'll play a card, possibly adding more cards to boost its strength and perform the actions on the card. When you're done with that, you'll recruit another friend from another player's yard or the park. Then you'll discard any cards you didn't play to your yard. And finally, you'll draw a new hand of five cards. When it's not your turn, you can follow the leader by playing a card if the suit matches and performing some of the same actions that the leader did. Some of the actions give you toys and pizza, which can later be used to level up your fort, giving you more points at the end of the game, as well as some other benefits. The game ends when the deck of cards runs out, when someone builds the last level of their fort, or when someone reaches 25 points. Then we finish the round and total up the score to see who wins. See? Easy. After that, I would spend a few more minutes explaining what the cards do, how to level up your fort, how to score points, the difference between your stuff and your pack, what the lookout spot is for, and just kind of dive right in. So yeah, it's really easy to learn, easy to teach. Uh, like I said, it shouldn't take more than five minutes, but this teach is made even easier by this great reference sheet that explains what all the symbols on the cards mean. Reason number two, playtime. In my game group, we call this type of game a tweener. <laughs> in that you can play the game in between some heavy games to reset your brain. It's kind of like a palate cleanser. All right, well. That was a fun six hour game. I like that part where you did that thing with the train thing. Oh, thanks, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that's too bad about the stock market there at the end. Whew. Indonesia next, right? Back to back long games? Hmm, that's exhausting. How about a tweener like Fort instead? The game lists the playtime of this game is 20 to 40 minutes, but I feel like once you've played the game a few times, unless you're playing with a Charles or a Kim, you'll be able to wrap this game up in about 20, maybe 25 minutes. Let's look at reason number three. It has interesting decisions. First of all, this is a little bit of an engine builder. You're trying to find the best combination of cards that work well together, and there's a ton of different strategies that you can try. You can go heavy resource collection and try and level up your fort for those juicy bonus points, or maybe you'll throw a bunch of stuff in your lookout area or your pack and use other cards to score a bunch of victory points with those cards. Should you try and collect several cards of the same suit to make certain actions stronger? Or should you diversify the suits of your cards so you can be prepared to follow as many people as you can? Not only that, but you're often faced with the decision of whether or not to play a particular card. Because of that follow mechanic, whenever you play a card, if any of your opponents have the same suit, they can copy it. All right, guys, I've been saving up. I think it's time for my big boy turn. A what? A big boy turn, look it up. It's a, it's a term that means like you save up a lot of small moves and to, to do one big move. It's like a big, it's like a, ugh. Big boy turn. Uh, never heard of it. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. I've never heard of it. I mean, it's, it's a thing. Uh, I don't think it is. Just look it up. Just, just take your big boy turn. 
Oop, whatever. Just anyway, I'm gonna I'm just gonna play this card here and uh, boost my fort up, which is gonna give me another seven points at the end of the game. You're you're building a fort? Oh well. Um, by my calculations, if I play this card, I can follow your action because you're the leader, and then I can also build a fort. Wait, wait, what? Oh, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that action too. No. What? You too? Oh, so I can just copy that and upgrade my fort too. Yay! Yeah, big boy turn. <sighs> big boy turn. See what I mean? What cards to add to your deck? What cards to play? What cards not to play? All of these decisions make what appear to be a simple game into a much more complex experience. Let's move on to reason number four. While the game doesn't have the same amount of variability as other games published by Leader Games, and let's be honest, I don't know of any games that do, there's still enough variance to make it play differently every single time. First, it's a deck builder, and by their nature, deck builders have an element of randomness to them. And second, once you hit Fort Level 1, you get a chance to pick up one of these cool made-up rules, which give you an additional way to score points. This will definitely reward you for picking up certain cards. And finally, reason number five. The price. When most games launch, they launch at the 50 to 70 price point or maybe higher than that, and Fort comes in at 30 bucks before you even get any kind of discounts that you might find. The cards are well made, the box fits sleeved cards, which is a big plus. Uh, the player boards are great with little recessed areas to hold everything in place, and the tokens are nice little wooden bits. In my opinion, the value is definitely there. That's all for this video. You know the drill. If you like this video, give the like button a little nudge. If you want to see more board game content like this, make sure and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. Thanks so much for watching and go play some games.